Hello and welcome to Glambia's Dairy Focus. In this week's episode, Maeve Regan will take you through decreasing levels of lactose in the bulk tank and what that implies on your cow's nutritional status in late lactation. And I would like to discuss with you the use of selective drug therapy when drying off your cows. As we move into the month of November, we should start to pay attention and take notice of our bulk tank analysis milk lactose levels. Milk lactose will have some knock-on consequences in regards to the overall processability of that milk into dairy products in regards to stability, overall quality and flavour. However, milk lactose can also indicate to us what might be going in, on in the herd in regards to dry matter intake capacity not being met, poor quality feed supply or restricted energy intake in the diet. What is milk lactose? Milk lactose is made from glucose in the blood and transferred over to the, the mammary tissue where it becomes lactose. And lactose is energy dependent, so it'll depend on energy, any restrictions in regards to energy intake or dry matter intake capacity. This will result in a lower lactose level. However, some of those staler cows or low production cows will also have a naturally lower lactose level. So those cows producing less than seven kilos of milk per day. In regards to target milk lactose levels, the target is to have cows producing greater than 4.35% lactose. However, in regards to processability and in order to ensure that we make high quality dairy products from that milk, that milk lactose level must stay above 4.2%. And in early lactation, with some of our really well fed herds, that lactose level we'd see it between 4.6 and 4.8 in that earlier stage of lactation. What causes low lactose within the herd? Things that put stress on the system, maybe a low immunity herd, but also grazing in poor conditions or grazing poor quality grass, having a poor quality silage or fodder buffer in front of the cows will result in a low lactose level, thin cows, low production cows, and also where the dry matter intake capacity of that cow is not being met or her energy intake is restricted. And how do we avoid this happening within the herd? We want to ensure that we're building body condition score at this time of year and we're not letting body condition score slip or fall. We don't want to see thin cows. We also want to have a high quality, high dry matter buffer put in front of the cows. And depending on the quality of that buffer, sufficient concentrate supplementation is also being offered to meet her energy requirements. And then finally, we want to dry off some of those lower producing cows in time so that we don't lower the overall lactose level within the herd. Again, the key principles this time of year, or at the moment, are to have a high quality and high dry matter buffer in front of the cows at all times. Have this silage analyzed in order to know what is in the diet so we can supplement properly to make sure her energy requirements are met. And also, we want to start thinking about drying off those poor body condition scored cows or those lower producing cows that are only producing less than 10 to 12 litres per day so we don't have a negative effect on our overall herd milk lactose level. In a recent episode of Dairy Focus you may have seen a very comprehensive overview of how to successfully dry off cows and all the different steps that go into it provided by AHI. What I would like to discuss today is very specifically what goes into using selective dry cow therapy successfully in your herd. Selective dry cow therapy is a dry cow procedure where not every cow in the herd receives antibiotic tubes. And some cows in the herd only receive a heat sealant when it comes to drying off. To do that successfully and not create cases of mastitis during the dry period, the cow selection for the selective dry cow therapy is very important. Now cow selection should happen based on individual cow cell count records, preferably through routine milk recording throughout the year. But also your bulk tank records are important. In herds that are consistently above 200,000 in, in, during lactation, selective dry cow therapy is probably not an option because the incidence of mastitis is just a little bit too high in your herd. But if your herd consistently runs below 200,000, absolutely have a look at using selective dry cow therapy. Another item to look at is historically, how successful is your dry period in containing the number of mastitis cases? So how good is it at curing mastitis, but even more importantly, how 
few cases of mastitis develop during the dry period in your herd. And if this runs below 10%, you would be an eligible candidate for selective drug therapy. And using your cell check report is very easy uh, to look at your dry cow mastitis cases uh, in, that, in that sense. So when it comes to selecting the cows suitable for selective drug therapy, you can use your ICBF to actually filter out the cows that based on their cell count records throughout lactation and even using the previous lactations records, which cows you feel comfortable with including in drying off only with a teat sealant and not giving them an antibiotic tube. When it comes to the actual drying off, you wanna make sure that when you're using the cell count records, the dry off happens within 30 days from the previous milk recording so that there is not too much time gone between your last accurate reading and then the cow actually being dried off. And that way you're limiting the risk of actually drying off an animal that quite recently picked up an infection and might be on a rising plane in cell count that you're overlooking and now you're drying her off with a teat sealant only, omitting the antibiotic, but actually including an infection in there with no antibiotic to tackle that infection. Along the same lines is the level of hygiene and how important that is at drying off. Because if you're not including an antibiotic in your dry cow procedure and only using a teat sealant, the level of cleanliness, the hygiene around the teat preparation and then inserting the tube into the teat is very important. Because the last thing you want to be responsible for is actually introducing an infection into that quarter at the time of drying off and then sealing it in there for the next two months without any antibiotic to cover, cover your tracks. So the hygiene is really around your dry cow procedure, your drying off procedure. And that also then implies that you don't want to be rushing through a large number of cows on the day. So what I would recommend is that you select maybe 10, 15 cows to be drying off with a teat sealant only on that day. And don't mix in cows that are receiving an antibiotic tube and then cows that are receiving teat sealant only. Just limit it to cows that are going to be receiving a teat sealant only. Limit the numbers, maybe just a single row in the parlor or limit it at 10 to 15. And also try and have a second person there. The second person can then hand you the items that you need in the right order. So there's two of you keeping track of the right order of, of the procedure, but also the person actually touching the teat and inserting the tube is then not gonna be touching anything dirty around the parlor. And that way you limit the risk of introducing any infection as you're introducing the teat sealant. Okay, well, thank you again for watching this episode of Dairy Focus. And if you have any further questions on any of the topics covered, please contact your local Glambia representative or log on to glambiaconnect.com.